Well, I owe everybody in my Show Me audience a short Show Me after the lengthy ones I've had to put up for my unit on factoring. This one will be short because I've already introduced factoring by grouping in several of the Show Me's. However, there are, there are some problems that I haven't demonstrated yet. So we're going to have three examples here, and this one's going to be over quickly. Uh, for my students, that'll, they'll be completely prepared for an assignment. If you're looking for more background on factoring by grouping, you need to go back and look at some of my other Show Me's about factoring trinomials. That's where I demonstrate extensively the method for factoring trinomials using this method. I'm going to focus here on uh, polynomials with more than three terms, because that's the one kind of polynomial I haven't already factored by grouping for my students. Not that this is going to be terribly different from what we've already done. With the factoring by grouping involving more than three terms, we simply treat this as though we've already split up the middle term, which there really you didn't because clearly the two numbers in the middle can't be put together to make a middle term. We are, we are still reversing the FOIL method here, and you'll, you'll see how that works in a minute, but it's a little bit different how it works. The O and the I, this is, this is a situation where the outside products and inside products from the FOIL method don't make a common term. They don't make a term that can be put together. Um, so you're looking at F and O and I and L here is what you're looking at. And that doesn't really help us that much. We still need to factor things. Fortunately, simply group them in pairs. Put these two together. What is their greatest common factor? Well, the GCF of 5 and 20 is 5. And the GCF of t to the fourth and t cubed is t cubed. If that bothers you, just remember t cubed is a stage you have to go through to get to t to the fourth. If I'm going to calculate 2 to the fourth power, I'm going to do 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And that's 2 cubed. It's a factor of 16, because in a minute I'm going to multiply it by 2 and get to 16. So whenever you have a higher power, any lesser power is a factor of it. So t to the fourth, its factors include t cubed, t squared, and t. And in fact, those and one are the only, those and one in itself are the only factors that we know of of t to the fourth. It may have other factors, but we won't know of them. At any rate, t cubed is the GCF for these uh, for these two terms for the t parts. So take five t to the fourth and divide it by five t cubed. And the only thing left standing is t. Take twenty t cubed and divide it by five t cubed. And the t cubes will cancel out. Twenty divided by five is four. Over on the right-hand side, take those two. What do they have in common? Well, 6 and 24 have 6 in common. 6t divided by 6 is t. 24 divided by 6 is 4. Now, what do those two terms have in common? Well, they have t plus 4 in common. What's left? 5t cubed plus 6. Does that work? Is that going to get us back to where we started? There's always an easy way to check. Use your FOIL method. Let's see if it happens. Well, the first numbers multiplied together, t times 5t cubed, 5t to the fourth. Your outside numbers, t times 6 is 6t. Your inside numbers, 4 times 5t cubed, 20t cubed. And 4 times 6 is 24. Well, everything that was in the original is in there now. So we do have the correct factorization. And this would be the answer to a problem like that. The process is even easier than the process for trinomials because we don't have to worry about discovering how to split up and make this happen because those two couldn't have been put together in the first place anyway. Let's play again. These first two terms can be paired. What is their GCF? Well, the coefficients are 2 and 1. They've got nothing in common. But x cubed and x squared have x squared in common. 2x cubed divided by x squared is 2x. 1x squared divided by x squared is 1. We have a negative sign here. That rule still applies. This will be negative. What do 14 and 7 have in common? I say 7. So negative 14x divided by negative 7 is positive 2x. And negative 7 divided by negative 7 is positive 1. Well, those two terms 
have 2x plus 1 in common. What's left? x squared minus 7. And that's the factorization for our original polynomial. This is a pretty straightforward process. And, uh, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't foresee any big trouble with it for my own students who have been practicing it on other problems already. If it's new to you, as I said, you can go back and take also a look at some of my previous demonstrations. Maybe they'll help. Um, I've even run into teachers who won't teach this topic to their classes. I had a principal observe my class once when I was teaching this and tell me when it was over that it was far too hard a topic for freshmen in high school. And this man had taught math in that school before he was principal for 20 years. I don't, I don't agree. I think that, and even, even if I did agree, I think that hard things are worth teaching. And I actually love the challenge teaching hard things to students who may struggle with them. Even in the struggle, they're going to learn something valuable. If nothing else, how to keep struggling. And that's a valuable thing to learn. You know, you say, say things sometimes and you wonder if people are going to understand. And since my motto is making sure everyone gets it, when I say struggling, I don't mean struggling and not succeeding. It's worth it to struggle as long as you're making progress. If you struggle and you're not making progress, stop struggling and get some help. And you can get that help from me at my blog or from your teacher or anybody or a friend. But I uh, just want to make sure you understand what I mean by struggling. If it's, uh, if it's futile struggling, it's time-wasting. Don't do that. Anyway, first two terms here, what do they have in common? Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to check something very important here, didn't I? It looks to me like these terms all have some things in common. I see coefficients that are all multiples of 3. So let's handle that. I also see that everybody has x's. Now, what's, what's the number of x's that everyone has? Well, here's x to the fourth. It includes x cubed, but x x squared doesn't include x cubed, so that wouldn't work. And then this one has x. It doesn't even have x squared. But what do they all have in terms of x? I think they all have at least one x. So we can factor out that one x at least. We can't factor out any more because this last term doesn't have any more to give. So the GCF for those four terms is 3x. Well, 45 divided by 3 is 15, and x to the fourth divided by x is x cubed. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3, and x cubed divided by x is x squared. 30 divided by 3 is 10, and x squared divided by x is x. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and x divided by x is 1, so we don't have to write it. That's much better. These smaller numbers will be much better to work with. The only thing I have to watch out for now is I don't want to forget to keep writing 3x every time, all the way down. Now these first two terms, what do they have in common? I think they have 3x squared in common. That's what I see. 15 divided by 3 is 5, and x cubed divided by x squared is x. And negative 3x squared divided by 3x squared is negative 1. These last two terms, what do they have in common? I think they are both even, so they have 2 in common. So we'll factor out 2. 10x divided by 2 is 5x. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And that's problematical. Somehow, somewhere, that was supposed to work out a little more neatly. And the problem is that, from the beginning, this was supposed to be negative. And now that it's negative, this was supposed to be negative. And now that that's negative, this can be negative. And now that that's negative, we can actually factor this. It helps to copy your problems down correctly, folks. It really does. So we have 3x. Now, these two terms inside the parentheses have 5x minus 1 in common. And the remaining uh, factors are 3x squared plus 2. And that's how you factor this. Again, check first and foremost to make sure that you copied the problem down correctly. 
then make sure that you have accounted for all common factors. That's what we did when we factored out 3x. And then pair them up and factor out those GCFs. And if the problem was structured correctly, remember that the, the book is providing, the, the, the course materials are providing this. Your teacher's not going to give you a problem that can't be factored usually. But if you have a teacher like that, and I, I did when I was in school, uh, that's a good thing. Just remember that if it can't be factored, stop. Don't force the issue. Some things can't be factored any further. For instance, 3x squared plus 2 has a square in it. You think you could factor that down, but no, no, you can't. That's done. So, well, I hope that's helped. That's the last in, in, in my unit. That's the last show me uh, for factoring in polynomials. The techniques here are really crucial because in Algebra 2, a little bit in Geometry, but a lot in Algebra 2 and in the preparatory classes for calculus and, of course, all over calculus, factoring is going to be a huge part of your work. It's extremely important when you start looking at graphs of polynomials, and then there are plenty of things out there that have graphs that are polynomials. So this is going to be a hugely important topic over the next couple, three years for, uh, for you Algebra 1 students or students in an equivalent course. So I hope you've mastered it, and uh, return to the show me's if you need to. Um, I do recommend that grouping approach. I, I really think that it's the best way to go. And then this show me was much shorter than the others because the grouping approach has already been addressed so extensively. If you don't feel like you've gotten the whole treatment, go back to the other show me is about trinomials, factoring trinomials, and you should be able to pick up what you need.